Hey there, teachers. So as we look for ways to diversify our teaching income, product creation and selling products on TPT is something that a lot of people are turning to as a great option um, in and out of the classroom. So today we're going to chat with someone who has been on GPT for a little over a year and has learned a lot. So I would love to welcome Alejandra. Hi, Alejandra. Hello, hello. Could you just give us a little bit of a background on your teaching journey and how you got into GPT? Sure. So my name is Alejandra. I am currently a classroom teacher. I teach on OutSchool and I have been a TPT author for about a little over a year. Um, I actually started getting into TPT when I started my OutSchool journey. So if you don't know what OutSchool is, it's basically like a marketplace where you create your own classes and teach those to children online. And since I had to create my own classes, I was also creating like my own resources, my own worksheets, my own games. And then I thought, why don't I post those on TPT? And then I realized it was very, very fun to actually do. It's like a creative outlet. So that's kind of how I started and what I'm totally. teaching. I love it. I love that you brought that up because a lot of us are creating stuff anyway. So why mm -hmm. not sell it? Sometimes it just takes a little polishing, a little bit of a cover, stuff like that to get it ready. So that's really mm -hmm. cool. Now, a lot of people when they start out on TPT are like, what do I create? Like, what would you say in terms of first products getting out there? Because there's kind of a stipulation on TPT about your first product. And then how do you go about coming up with new ideas for product creation? Yeah, so obviously when you start on TPT, your first pod product has to be a free product. So it has to be something that you are providing for free. So a good free resource. I would make sure it's something that relates to what you plan on creating in the future. Um, because something what I like to do is I like to, when I create products, like I'm creating a product line, for example, I like part of that product line to be free and then everything else to be paid. So my free products kind of lead to my paid products. Um, but yeah, your first product has to be free. When I first started, I kind of just started listing everything that I already had. And like you mentioned, I just started polishing everything, making sure it was nice and neat, creating covers um, and posting that stuff. And then once I had started to post products I've already created, I started to kind of copy products that were doing well. So like if a game was doing really well, I might try to create that product, maybe creating as a science game instead or a math game. So changing the subject area um, or just the things inside of it. That's huge. I think that's really important. Um, and you said the phrase product line, which I, I know when I first started, and I only started about six months ago, a little less, a little less than six months ago. And so I was like, what is that? And so I want to hear your definition. I know for me, it's kind of just a group of related, um, usually like the same game for me. I create games as well. For me, it's like an I have who has game with different topics for vocabulary and then I create that same game in English, French, and Spanish, um, mm -hmm. since I have resources that um, are, are in those categories. And that way, all language teachers know, hey, this is the place for language learning games. Um, what about you? What, what kind of product lines do you are you working with? Yeah, so mine are kind of similar. I think of it as when I first start, I have like a template. So what I first started creating was like a simple board game. And I had like a template, a blank board game with nothing in it. And then when I started creating the product, I would put different things. Maybe I'd have one of them that focuses on letters, another one that focuses on like CVC words, another one that focuses on like diagraphs. So it's the same exact template. I'm just adding different subjects or topics within that template. So usually the template takes a long time to create. And then the other part is really easy, just plugging everything in. Totally. And mm -hmm. while we might start out with that and just the game board, I mean, you and I were laughing before this, it takes time. Uh, product creation takes time. And it's not simply, here's a game board, take my game board. It's catching the potential customer's eye. Um, can you walk us through a few things? I know I have a checklist that I kind of have to run through for my own well-being when I create a product and it takes time. But once you've got these templates, you know, that's when you can kind of 
plug and chug and create a bunch of products at once. What do you, what's your checklist look like? Yeah. So, I mean, I start with a template, which that takes a long time. And honestly, since I still consider myself newer to TPT, I don't like to go crazy with a template either. So like I'll create a template, I'll create like maybe three or four products and see if they start to sell. If they start to sell, that's kind of giving me a, hey, this template might be pretty good that you can start to kind of diversify and again, do it in like other subject areas or other skills. If it's not doing so hot, I might try to see if there's any changes I can make. It might not necessarily be the template. It could be the keywords I'm using. It could be, you know, the description. It could be a lot of other things. So I kind of try to figure that out before I put like too much work and effort into it. But usually I start with templates and then I start creating products and I kind of try to pay attention to my um, analytics. Um, and then just posting on TPT is very time consuming. So I have like pre-made like covers, pre-made previews, pre-made um, description boxes that I just have to plug all of that stuff in as well. So that's kind of my checklist. I try to create a template, create a few products, post a few, a few products, and then I just repeat. That's huge. And that first part, I mean, which is, well, you said you made a few and then you see if they work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wish I had the patience to do that. I'm just like, I have an idea. I'm going to do it. But before I do that, I do do my due diligence and I get on TBT and search as I would, you know, if I'm a Spanish mm -hmm. teacher, which I was in a former life. And I would say uh, Spanish vocab games. Yes. That's what I would expect someone to type in if they're getting my products. I want to see what comes up. I want to see what vocab units are already there. What's selling really well. What's not selling really well. And if there's any like special features that are in there, a lot of people have like self-checking activities, stuff like that. I haven't gotten to that level, um, but I do have like a QR code. I've gotten really into QR codes recently, which you can do on for free using Bitly and like a lot of other mm -hmm. things. But um, put those QR code access points in there. And that leads to like realia and pictures and different presentations that teachers can use. So there's a lot that you can add on to make yourself stand out, even if there already are. And I liked products. what you mentioned um, that I feel like it's really important. It's something that I'm trying to get better at is actually doing your research sometimes before you even create the template. Because what I was doing, and I feel like I'm still doing because I have just so many products I created I've just been making templates out of products I've created already. But what you're saying is perfect if maybe you haven't started creating products yet or you're thinking of a product line and you're not sure if it will be a good idea is to kind of do that research, type in some words. OK, what comes up? Is this something teachers are searching for? Like, are there a lot of things that actually come up? Is there not a lot of things that come up? So there's some research you want to do as well um, before you create and put all that energy and work totally. into it. It takes a lot. Yeah. And when we talk about things that are doing well, we're referring to, I'm referring to like the amount of ratings. Is that what you're referring to as yep. well? Yeah. That's usually so. how you can tell on TPT is the amount of stars. Perfect. Like it has 200 something ratings. It has 400. Like, yeah. 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 And for somebody who has not even gotten a review yet, I'm like, come on. It takes like, a while. Yeah, it does. And it might stuff, be then... coming soon because usually I've noticed I start to get a lot of reviews when it's sale time Perfect. because people are trying to get their um, mm -hmm. points or whatever. Yeah. Give us a little insider, insider info. I do this too. What do you do before a TPT sale? Not gonna lie, not as much as I should. <laughs> I, I've been neglecting my poor email list, but my email list was definitely something I was using in the past. Um, simply setting your store to the sale because they don't do it for you automatically. So you can do that. I talk about it on socials. Um, and I think that's really it right now. I know in the future, I really, really want to focus on email marketing. Because I know like for me, last year, I was teaching fourth grade. And as a lot of you know, I was online full time for like four, three or four years. And I was going back to the classroom and I hadn't been in a while. So I was on like a ton of email lists. And that was like the way I learned the most versus like socials. So mm -hmm. I feel like you learn a lot and you like I was buying things from those TPT authors because they give me a little snippet. They put their thing, whether it was free or paid. And that's what I was looking at. 
usually when I'm on like social media, I feel like I get good ideas, but I'm not always necessarily looking to purchase something. So I've just been trying to keep that in the back of my head as well. Like my personal journey and how I can kind of put that for others. Totally. That's a really good point. Um, something I've definitely learned this year as my, one of my goals has been learning more about email. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, we're not necessarily looking to buy when we're just scrolling, we're yeah. looking for ideas. Um, and the, the pre-sale tip that I was talking about was going to my past purchases and then seeing what I have oh, not yes. yet left <laughs> a comment for, <laughs> which I then, <laughs> yeah, we get credit for. Mm -hmm. So I have, I know I have two things that I absolutely must buy tomorrow, uh, mm -hmm. because we're recording this just before the back to school sale, um, in 2023. Um, but the idea here is to then build up your credit and you get that by leaving reviews. So Which I, always uh, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> People are going to be leaving those reviews. Okay. Um, now as we both are kind of, you know, we've, we've dipped our toes in the water. You've been in longer than I have, you know, kind of some of the, the wisdom points in this sphere. Um, I've learned a lot from a few different people, but I want to hear what have you been, who have you been listening to and who do you feel like you've learned the most from? Yeah. So I feel like I have three um, people that I listen to the most, I guess I would say. One of them I actually pay for. It's an RTA membership, but she also, excuse me, she also has a lot of free resources as well. Um, mostly on like her YouTube. I think her podcast is the same exact thing as her YouTube, but I, I usually watch her on YouTube, but her membership is super, super good. Um, what I really like about it is you could join for like one or two months if you wanted to. Actually, I don't even know if it's open right now, but if it, when it opens, I know you can join for like a short period of time and you can just get so much because she has like courses in there, challenges, etc. But I don't know when she plans on opening it. Um, but her YouTube is really, really good. That's rebranded teacher by Lauren. Lauren Fulton. Yeah. Um, I also love Becca Davis. She's another person on YouTube that I watch a lot. She was actually the first like TPT person I followed. And she just has like a plethora of tips. And she's been on the platform for a while. So I like following her. And then once in a while, I listen to the CEO teacher, so Casey Morris. Um, I don't listen to her as often because I feel like she also focuses a lot on just like teacherpreneurship and stuff. And I'm really trying to focus on, on TPT, but she does have some really good content. And she's another one that has kind of been in the TPT game for like a very, very long time. So those are the three I think I listen to the most. I love it. That's really important to just have some of those veteran voices. Mm -hmm. um, and then also make sure that you're kind of fresh and up to date on what's changing because it is changing right. um, constantly. Um, I also listened to Lauren Fulton's rebranded teacher podcast rebranded teacher academy podcast um which has been so helpful so if anybody's just starting out i would say start at episode one <laughs> take notes um and mm -hmm. kind of get started there um i also love pocket full of primary her youtube videos were really helpful yeah. to me at the beginning i, I know she's her. she's great and she's so mm -hmm. tech savvy that it's helpful to know like a lot of the kind of Google hacks and stuff that you can use to really create mm -hmm. stuff quickly, especially if you're designing in slides. Um, mm -hmm. So very cool. Well, I love it. Well, I hope people will go follow your store. Um, and also um, I would love to hear kind of as we wrap up, what is something you love about being in the teacherpreneur space right now? Yeah. So I think something I really like is just the ability to share and connect with others. So like I mentioned before, I do create products. I sell on TPT, but I also purchase a lot of products on TPT. So I think it's great that you are able to share maybe your strengths and then you're able to get strengths from others. Um, so that's probably one of the number one things. And then just connecting because when you're in person in the classroom, you don't meet a lot of people that like to do teacherpreneur kind of stuff, whether that's TPT, doing things on YouTube or social media. So it's really fun to connect with teachers that are kind of have similar goals as you. So those are probably be my top two. Oh, that's awesome. Agreed. Well, I know I have really enjoyed learning from you and getting to connect and um, we 
have all kind of in, gotten gotten involved in a lot of uh, the different parts of each other's businesses. So it's kind of fun to, yeah. to grow together, which I love. Um, well, I'm excited for you as you start the next school year. Um, and I am so grateful to you. If you guys are looking for uh, great uh, teaching resources, mostly like early reading, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of math type stuff, go check out Alejandra's shop. And um, thank you so much. I'm excited thank you, thank for, you. for what's to come for you. All right. Happy teaching, everybody. Bye.